Do you want to build a hoop house for raised beds, but you don't know where to start? You came to the right place, because in this video I'll show you how I built one, and the beauty of this build is that it will cost you less than 100 bucks. I always wanted a hoop house that can protect my vegetables, and with this here redesign of the garden, it was a perfect time to make my dreams come true. So I decided I will build a hoop house that will sit on top of the raised bed dedicated to my tomatoes. To give you an idea, the hoop house will be 11 feet long, 4 feet wide and 9 feet tall, giving the tomatoes plenty of growing space inside of it. And one feature I wanted on my hoop house is to have roll up sides, so stick to the end to see how I'll make them. So without further ado, let's start making a hoop house for raised beds that will protect my tomatoes. Here is all the lumber we'll need for this build, and I'm going to start by making the sides. The sides will be made with two connected 2x3s. They need to be straight, so check them before you buy them. You can look down the long side to see if there are any imperfections or unwanted curves. To connect the side corner posts, with the crossbeam, I went with a rabbit joint that will give me more strength than a classic butt joint. And to strengthen the structure even more before we place it into the ground, we need to screw a scrap piece of lumber to hold it tightly together so it won't fall apart. Now it's also a time to make a mark six and a half feet from the top down, on all corner posts. This will be useful later on when placing them into the ground. So far, we created our side structures, but before we continue, we need to prepare the foundation for our hoop house. This will be of course a raised bed that is leveled and squared. To check if your raised bed is perfectly squared, measure the diagonals. If they are the same length, you're good to go. If not, make the changes now, until you still can. And why this is important? Because you will use your raised bed border as a guideline to build the structure of your hoop house around it. You'll see what I'm talking about in a minute. As you can see, my initial raised bed was all crooked and I needed to level it out. Here the best thing you can do is to find your highest point and start leveling both sides that are starting from this corner and continue to the opposite corner, leveling each side as you go. Your raised bed should be level after that. Another thing to do before we place the structure in place is to dig some pilot holes that will anchor the hoop house structure into the ground. This can be done with special tools or with just a metal pole and some hand digging. To know where to dig, line a scrap piece of wood with the corner of the raised bed and mark it. That way you will know exactly where the hole needs to be. I dug my holes two feet down but if you want to make your structure more stable or windproof, I would recommend to dig at least one third of the corner post head. Now we are all set and we can place the sides into the ground. Remember how I told you to mark six and a half feet from the top? Now you can check if the mark lines up with the raised bed, and if not, make adjustments. Because the raised bed is leveled, the post will be up to the same height if the mark aligns with the raised bed. Make sure all the corner posts are plumb and screw them with the raised bed to secure them in place. They will be probably still floppy, but now we are going to tie them together with one long 
one by two on each side, so we'll have a kind of stable structure. This one by two will serve also to anchor the hoops for the roof and secure the roll-up sides in place. You will see how in a minute, but first we need to make the structure where the tomato trellis will be attached. And don't worry about the length of the 1x2, I will cut it later on to be flush with the structure. It's much easier that way. After reinforcing the structure with some more screws, it's time to start securing the hoops to eventually support the roof. I will use 5 hoops spaced 2.5 feet apart, secured on the side 1x2 and the top corner 1x2. To secure the hoops on the side 1x2, I use some electrical tubing clamps that are one size smaller than the electrical tubing that I use. They fit perfectly inside and will temporarily hold the hoops until I permanently screw them in place. The best way to screw your hoops in place is to drill a small pilot hole through both sides and then a large one hole with a larger drill bit so you'll be able to fit your screw inside. After, clean the mess you made with your drill bit so the plastic cover won't catch on it and rip apart. To cover my hoop house, I bought some UV resistant plastic cover that is slightly bigger than the hoop house, so I need to cut it to length first. The size of the plastic cover was chosen in that way that I can use the excess material to cover the sides of the hoop house. One thing you need to know is that the UV plastic cover has two sides. The side that will be facing the outside and the side that will be facing the inside of your hoop house. This is important because if you flip it on the wrong side, the UV protection won't work. So ask which side is the UV protective side when you buy it. In my case, it was the side that had the print on it. To attach the side plastic cover, we need to remove the scrap piece that supported the side structure and attach some electrical tubing to each corner that will function as an anchor point for the UV cover. The UV cover on the sides will be attached permanently, so for that I made some clamps and screwed them in place to hold the plastic cover. Start on the top and then continue to the bottom securing the plastic cover in place along the way. When the cover is secured in place, you can cut any excess, but leave a few inches if you need to make slight adjustments in the future. And be careful with the knife, you don't want to damage your cover right now. After the sides, it's time to place your roof cover. Stretch the UV plastic cover over your hoops and try to place it in the center. We attached it temporarily with the clamps I made earlier and when we saw that the cover fits correctly, we attached it permanently by screwing some screws in the clamps. Now we are ready to make the roll-up sides and this is done in two steps. First, I need to secure the plastic cover on my side 1x2. This is done with two feet long cuts of 1x2 secured in place with some screws. And after that, 
we can finally construct the roll-up bolts. The roll-up pole will be made out of two electrical tubing. To connect them together, simply cut a line roughly two feet long into one tube, so you can easily squeeze it into the other tube. After that, secure it in place with some duct tape. To connect the pole to the plastic cover, simply roll the cover onto the pole you just made and be sure that it's rolled up to the same height along the whole pole. To secure it in place, use the same clamps as before and screw them in. And don't forget to cover the screw heads, wherever they are touching the plastic cover, with some duct tape, otherwise they can damage it. To make the roll-up crank, snap the tubing like I did and protect the snap location with some duct tape, so it won't break apart. And now it's time to roll up your sides for the first time. If they are not straight, you can adjust them by rolling up the plastic cover again, making sure that it's rolled up to the same height this time. To protect the roll-up side, so it won't flap around too much in a windy day and damage the plastic cover, we need to attach some strings. This is done by attaching some cord on both sides of the roll-on. Now the hoop house for my tomato raised bed is secured and ready to be upgraded with some passive irrigation system. If you're interested to see how I do it, make sure to be subscribed. I hope you find this video informative and that you learned how to build a hoop house for raised beds. Happy gardening!